Okay, I have tried for the last week to wrap my head around state machines, and I just, here we got this little guy here, and the only state type of state machine that I can possibly get my head around is the crappiest, lamest version of them that, yeah, you could make a game out of it, but I'm just going to run through it. I'm going to show you what I can do bad state this is this is all i can figure out how to do so what i'm going to do is i'm going to have this um script uh directly on the sprite 2d because every function that i'm going to create every state is just going to be altering the sprite i i, I figured out i figured i can extend that to you know player controls the important thing was understanding the functionality of the state itself first of all it, it, we're going to define these different states um, function hide me. Uh, I'm just going to have something where I hide the sprite from being visible. Big deal. Um, these are these are these are like states. Oh, hid me. Let's make it hide me so I don't freak out. Um, get 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 away. Get okay. Show me. Uh, self dot visible well, it's true. Come on now. And finally, spin me, which is self dot rotate. Ah, I divided by 50. I don't understand radians yet. Um, anyway, hooray. We have a bunch of functions. What do you, why are you guys complaining? Oh. I was so excited about this and trying to wrap this up that I formatted it incorrectly. I like it when I can understand the errors. That makes me happy. We have a bunch of functions, right? Now we want to create an enumerator. We'll call it state, states. Uh, we'll fill it with states. Now, they, the, the enumerator is going to eventually, each one is going to refer to each one of these states, but it doesn't really matter what they're called right now as long as they exist hide, uh, show, and rotate. Okay, that exists. You want to start by initializing the enum uh, on ready are, we'll call it current state equals um, states dot hide. That way, the moment we turn on the game, um, nothing will be visible and we'll have to press buttons to, uh, to make it visible. So we have functionality. The part of the state machine that controls behavior is here. We have the actual states. What we don't have is a way to trigger them, um, and a way to run them. So the next thing we need to look into is the case statement in the physics process. Um, luckily, that's, so let's see here. Uh, function physics. As far as I understand, what case actually does is, especially under the physics process, that constantly looks at what the current state of the enumerator is and looks for changes to, to swap it out. I don't, I don't, I haven't been able to really look up case and get a definition for it that makes sense to me, but, um, yeah, case cur equals, uh, we want state z dot, oh, we don't want, we don't want colon there. State z dot hide equals, wait, um, hmm. Oh yeah, yeah. We want we want the functionality of the. So we're gonna run the hide equals hide me. There we go. Um, state z dot show will be show me. We want that to run, and then state z dot rotate equals spin me. So these are just the functions that are being called each time the state. Was I wrong? Spent. Is I wrong about the 
formatting. Oh. I don't know what the heck case is. It's supposed to be match. All right, there we go. And it's just, see, that's one of those things where um, it means nothing to me. That means nothing to me because that has nothing to do with skill or talent. That's just me not understanding the, not memorizing the, the inborn functions inside of Godot. Okay, now what we have is we have functionality for each state. We have the physics process, the game itself, running through the ability to swap states, um, where it will swap out the current state for any of these, which will run these functions. What we don't have is anything to trigger any of that. So now, it's more inborn events, inborn functions, um, event, or yeah, that's what we want, input.event. So, I did create a special key for this up in the project settings. I assigned R to quote unquote rotate. So that's what's going to happen here in a sec. If um, event dot is action pressed, UI accept, accept is fine. Uh, we will run. No, what we're going to do is we're going to set the state. Um, cur equals uh, stay z dot show yeah z dot show um, and again these little colons here now elif and dot is action pressed uh, rotate is that all rotate? No, no, no. Um, it's got to be in quotes. It's in, didn't I call it rotate? You know what? I never created that. Um, that was in a different project. So let's go ahead and, first of all, cur equals state z dot uh, rotate. Else cur equals state z dot hide now the, this is fake because this doesn't exist let's go to the projects project settings input map add new action called rotate let's add listen for inputs r there we are close now it exists now that's real okay so now what we have we have these which is triggering a change of state. We have the physics process, um, which runs functionality based on each state. And then we have what the actual functionality is that we've assigned to each state. So we have the behavior, which is here. And we have the conditions, which are here. And then we have the state machine, mini state, crappy, poopy state machine itself here. You can make an entire game out of this, technically, if I did it right, which I just didn't. <laughs> All right, here, we see nothing, right? Now, if I hit enter, little man, mouse move. Little man, if we press R, nothing happens. Oh, oh, something happened. He's rotating, but we can't see it. Why? I know exactly why. Because I didn't add visibility to the rotation function, self.visible equals true. Without being able to see him, it's impossible to be able to tell that we're going from, we, that we're capable of going from one state to any other state without needing to bridge anything. Oh, you know what? Do I just change that to, how about just is action so I can hold it down? I actually don't, well, I haven't like looked into what each different types of key presses and such do, but is action pressed feels like it's a duration. Whereas if I enter, look at that. And then he spins, I can stop him. I can make him go away. He can spin visibly, he can stop, spin, boom. This is a state machine. It's a terrible state machine. Now, if I just change this to character input and jump um, and attack, then he could do all this stuff. He couldn't attack while moving, but that's, that's a whole nother can of worms. That's a different type of game entirely.
there's plenty of games where you stop dead in your tracks while you uh, attack. Well, anyway, that was it. That was all I was capable of for a whole week. I understand, I understand conceptually what a state machine is, but I still don't understand how to implement one that is a base class where other classes can inherit, or not other classes, but yeah, I mean, yeah, just other classes that extend from it and inherit from that base class. You swap out like functionality that swaps out the states, but are independent of understanding what the states are. I don't understand any of that. I only understand this so far. I just wanted to record something because it's been a while and I've been really struggling with this and it's been f frustrating me. Anyway, goodbye.